What's up, everybody, and welcome to the sixth episode of Hang 10 with Quint Kalani. We've made it, episode six. We're officially off one hand, and we are on to the other. Maybe a pinky, maybe a thumb, but nonetheless. Before we get into anything else, there is something I do want to say. Um, if you're in the NorCal area and you are looking for something to chill out on, uh, what I cannot do is recommend the Designs uh, pre-roll product found at your uh, at your Coloss um, distributors. These uh, these jaunts, skinny jaunts. Like some French fingers, some dainty French finger jaunts. And that's not what I need. I need some Texas thumbs, some Alabama hammers, some Louisiana hot links. I like them thick boys and thick jaunts. I'm trying to get somewhere. And then little French finger jaunts ain't getting me nowhere. So, if I can make any sort of recommendation, this is my weekly recommendation. I got my recommendations and I put out two of them. On the Closers Podcast every week. Well, I got another recommendation for you. And it's to stay away from the design brand, Johns. No good. No bueno. They're not going to get you to where you want to go. Other news. Sports. It's been a decent, decent week for sports. Last night, of course, we had uh, Robert Whitaker coming back. Off his devastating loss to Israel Adesanya uh, for the middleweight title. Uh, it was a dope, dope fight. Super technical affair. Robert Whitaker's all-around mixed martial arts game. Got it done. Secured three takedowns in the final round to get the win. We're not going to go too balls deep into MMA, but we got to shout out Robert Whitaker for getting back on the track. Polynesian champion doing the damn thing and getting it done. Besides that, more sports. And I'm glad to talk about other sports. Because I love MMA. I love the UFC. And it's dominated my summer. It has been the summer of MMA. Encapsulated by Fight Island. What a great marketing ploy. Fight Island. Now, it didn't really live up to my hype. But it delivered. Other news. NFL. Dear God, we hope it happens. Fingers crossed. Knock on wood. Sweet Jesus, bring the NFL back into our lives. This news. When I first heard it, it was like a punch straight to the gut, to the solar plexus, straight to the jejudum. Knocked all the air out of me. Jamal Adams, all pro safety of the New York Jets, formerly of, will now be going and playing for the Seattle Seahawks, and if you know anything about me, then you know that I hate the Seattle Seahawks with a uh, fervent passion. I find them to be the most aesthetically displeasing team, franchise, in NFL history. I don't know how to describe the blue that is their primary color. Stale puddle? Stale puddle blue-gray. It's a disgusting color for a disgusting city. I guess in many ways it's quite fitting. But nonetheless, I was a little intimidated when Jamal Adams uh, first got to Seattle, when the news first broke, because I know how good Jamal Adams is. And I was afraid that this was going to signal a second coming uh, to the Legion of Boom. A Legion of Boom Part 2. A sequel. But then I remembered that we got a guy named Cooper Cup playing for the L.A. Rams. And I wasn't intimidated. New more. Speaking of Cooper Cup, recently voted by his peers, the NFL Top 100 Players of the League, the 89th player overall, his first time introduction on the list. want to give a shout out to Cooper Cup. Mad props. But I think we're going to do big things this year, especially in our own division, especially against the Seattle Seahawks, and especially in the passing game, especially from Cooper Cup all over Jamal Adams. 
those routes. Cooper Cup, man. Crisp. Crisp Cup. Crisp Cookie Cup. That should be his name. Crisp Cookie Cup. That dude flows, man. That dude flows. I think he's one of the best receivers in the league. Hands down. I think it's going to take uh, take a little bit of time for the rest of the league to jump on that, but I think he's right there. Especially after the catch. Cooper Cup is magic after the catch. But anyway, I like the Rams. I like Cooper Cup this year. 1,300 yards. Book it. Call it. I'm going to say Cooper Cup, or Cooper, <laughs> Cooper Cup, 1,300 yards, 8 touchdowns. Book it. I think the Rams are going to have a good year, man. I think Van Jefferson's going to have a good year. Robert Woods is going to have a good year. Josh Reynolds, Tyler Higby, Gerald Everett maybe also have a good year. The big thing is Cam Akers. That is the big question mark. You know, I think conventional wisdom goes to Jared Goff. You know, can Jared Goff carry this team? Can Jared Goff lead this team? I don't know about all that. I think this offense is going to live and die on what Cam Akers can or cannot do. Maybe even more than that. It might be more than, you know, maybe sort of a running back by committee thing. It may be what Cam Akers, Malcolm Brown, Darrell Henderson Jr., and John Kelly can do if all four, um, you know, make it past roster, roster cuts, which are currently ongoing. I also recently saw that uh, that uh, Pro Football rated the Rams' defensive line this past year, 2019, as the third best defensive line in the NFL. I think we're only going to get better now that we've included A. Sean Robertson into the mix. I think it's going to be a great year for us, man. I think it's going to be a bounce back year. Last year was a bit of an aberration, you know. While we did have success in the running game in the red zone on the freaking goal line, we didn't have that consistent success that uh that we need throughout the game to 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 open up the passing game. It just wasn't there. You know, how much of that is the offensive line, how much of that is Todd Gurley, I don't know. Apparently, the front office thought of his thought it was enough of Todd Gurley to get rid of him. And I wonder what he'll do in Atlanta now. I don't think Todd Gurley is going to be able to duplicate the success that he had in the first half of his career in Los Angeles. I don't think he's going to be able to achieve that again. And it is what it is. Oh well. But besides that, guys, I mean, it's been a pretty mundane week. You know, trying to uh, I'm trying to take a break from all the bad, all the negative that's out there. It's inescapable. There was some other news this week. You know, there was uh, President Trump reaching out. Not even, <laughs> reaching out's not the right way to put it. Someone asked President Trump about uh, Ghislaine Maxwell. If you know who Ghislaine Maxwell is, then you know that she was the propri- proprietor of uh, young women for Jeffrey Epstein. And uh, they asked the president uh, how he felt about her trial going forward and he wished her well make that make of that what you will (laughs) something certainly smells funky about that you know not to make uh not to make any assumptions or or cast grand illusions because that would certainly be um the wrong thing to do in a time like this but something smells a little off about this whole situation Hopefully, uh, hopefully all will, all will, uh, all will come to the light soon. I heard that her trial date was not to a year from now. If that's the case, then I'd be really interested to see the Vegas odds on whether or not she's going to make it to that trial. (laughs) It's almost suspicious in itself, honestly, to put her trial so far away from now. But besides that, man, just trying to just trying to stay more focused on the positive. I'm trying to get back into into escapism via via live sports outside of MMA, outside of UFC. 
dear God, we need it back. We need it back. I know baseball is back, but <laughs> I mean, has baseball ever really been back? Since like 1956, has baseball ever really been back? Who knows? Oh, well, it is what it is in the immortal words of our champion. It is what it is. And this was episode six. It was a brief episode, but it was a brief week. At least it felt like it is. Felt like it was. Excuse me. That's what happens when you get back into the nine to fives, man. Days just blend together. It's a shitty way of being, but it's only going to be this way for a little bit longer. I'm going to catch you guys next week. Episode 7. The Magnificent Episode 7. Next week, we're going to be putting out a uh, a list of film recommendations. Uh, hang 10. List of film recommendations. I haven't decided yet if it's going to be you know genre-based or, you know how we're going to catalog and categorize, but it'll be 10 film recommendations from me to you. Look for it um, next Monday. Anyway, guys, I want to thank you for stopping by. You can uh, you can follow this podcast, Closing Out the Meet Week with Marco Alvarado, and the Closers podcast, co-hosted by Marco Alvarado and myself every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on all your podcast platforms on YouTube you can find us The Closers Podcast on Instagram you can find us Closers Podcast Marco Alvarado, Quinn Kalani we'll be here to get you through the week from Monday to Friday until then adios